Right, from the 2001 advanced tyre paper, that was question B6 in that second section used to be in those days. So for the first part, you're given the equations of two lines in different forms, parametric and standard or symmetric, and you have to show that they intersect and find the point of intersection, and then find the angle, or rather just the cosine of the angle between them. Right, so here it is, equation of two lines, and find the point of intersection between them. So there's two lines that may well cross in space, if they do, we'll call it the point P. And the thing is, if they do in fact cross, then at that point of intersection, all the coordinates of the points X, Y and Z must be the same on both lines. Right, well, the first line here is in parametric form, that's ideal, but the second one's in symmetric form, so I've put in a parameter S, which means I can rearrange it into parametric form just by solving the separate little equations. So x will equal negative 2s, y, that'll be negative s minus a 2, put the minus 2 first, minus the s, z will be 2s plus the 9, because I'll put the 9 first, 9 plus the 2s, so it's in the same form as the first line. Then, equate the various coordinates. So, taking the x's first of all, that means we've got, from the first one, 8 minus 2t must get the same answer as negative 2s. For the y-coordinates, minus 4 plus 2t must give the same answer as negative 2 minus s. Same for the z's. 3 plus t must give the same answer as 9 plus 2s. Now there's three simultaneous equations that need solved. You can only do two at a time. Well, one and two are perfect, so these t's will cancel out. So doing that, adding the two together, I've got 4 equals negative 2 minus 3s. So taking that over, 3s will be minus 6. So s is negative 2. Right, put that back in. Which one? We'll stick it into number, which one there? We'll stick it into number, or two will do. So, into number two, we've got this. Negative four plus two t is negative two. Take away a negative, so it'll be plus two. So two t is four, so t is two. Now, they'll work for x and y, but do they work for z though? Two lines may appear to intersect, but are they in fact properly intersecting? Are the y-coordinates the same? You'll have to check it with number three. So substitute that into number three. So if you put the s equals negative two, and the t equals, that will be a three, I think, into number three, you'll have, there we go, that's a two, equals five, and the other one, nine plus, two times nine is five, which means they do work. So the set is consistent, which means the lines do in fact intersect. And then using either of these parameters, use the t, it's a bit easier looking, so that will be 8 take away 2 times t. The y will be negative 4 plus 2 times t. And the z will be negative 3 plus the t. And putting those numbers together, you have the point of intersection, 4, 0, 5. That's that done. All right, now the second bit, angle between the lines. Well, this actually just goes back to the IELTS, doesn't it? You've got two lines that are crossing. You want the angle between them. Well. Well, if you've got the direction vector of the first one and the direction vector of the second line, then <coughs> you can just use the scalar product. So what about again, for the first line, the direction vector with these coefficients of t, and in the symmetric form, the direction vectors with these denominators. Right, so the scalar product. Scalar product would be the length of one times the length of the other times that angle that you want, the angle between them. So rearranging that will have the scalar product in component form divided by two lengths. Then it's just put all the numbers in. x times x, y times y, z times z. The lengths of the vectors square all the components. So squaring these. But these are the same in both, so you can expect the same answer. Then go through the calculations. A 4, a negative 2, and a 2. 4, 4, 1, 9. Same again, 9. So that's 4 upon 9, which means theta will be the inverse cos to take over of 4 ninths. And that's that one done. Right, so part B now. Part 1, get the equation of a plane. Well, that just means you need a point on it and a perpendicular direction, which you've got, line 2. And then part 2, see where line 1 cuts through it. Well, that'd be easy. Just feed the coordinates into its equation. Right, so to get the equation of this plane here. Right, so we've got a plane, which we'd call pi, capital P. To get the equation of a plane, I would need the normal, the perpendicular to the plane, and some point on it. We've got a point. 1, negative 4, 2. Right. Now the perpendicular to the plane. Well, if it's perpendicular to L2, then N must be parallel to L2. So L2, again, was these denominators in the symmetric form. 
which means if n's parallel, we could just use the same one or any multiple of it, but that one will do. Right, so to get the plane pi, we've got the normal dot r, r being the position vector of any point on it, will be the normal dot a, any given point on it. So putting these numbers into it, then we've got these two scalar products, which you just have to work out. So that's going to give you your Cartesian form over here with the coordinates, and then this wee bit of arithmetic will give me the constant at the end of it, so that's going to come to 6. So they are. That's the equation of the plane. Right, clear the board. That was part 1. Part 2. Right, what have we got here? This time, find where this line cuts the plane. Well, it will cut the plane when its coordinates fit the coordinate of the plane. So if I put those x's and y's and z's in there to fit the equation of the plane, I'll find the intersection. So that would be negative 2 times, put that x coordinate in, minus put that x coordinate in, and 2 times by my plane, put that coordinate in, and that should come to 6 if it's on the plane. No, it's just all this arithmetic, just keep multiplying this lot out, so we're finally plus 6. Plus 2t equals 6, so there's some things the same. 2t and negative 2t will cancel out, just going to be a 4t, and the 6s will go, and I've just got that, so I'm just going to have 12 on that side. So t equals 3. So the point on the line 1 is the point where the parameter is 3. So that identifies a unique point. 8 minus 2 times 3, so that'll be 2. y will be negative 4 plus 2 times 3, that'll also be 2. And z will be 3 plus 3, which will be 6. So the point must be the point 2, 2, 6. That's it.